Today, we'll be tackling how to create this particular loop super fast. It's really easy and hopefully the video will be under 10 minutes long. So without any further ado, let's begin. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X to delete our default cube. And then we can press Shift A, Mesh, Icosphere. We're going to be requiring two of these, the main object to emit particles, as well as the particles themselves. For the main object, we're going to go down to the drop down over here and just increase the number of subdivisions to something like four. And then we can scale it down to something like 0.5 and leave it as our main object. After that, we can press Shift A, Mesh, Icosphere again, and this time change the subdivisions from 4 down to something like 1, and then press GX, bring it to the side, and leave it as is. For this one as well, we'll just click on Object, Shade Smooth. Now that we have that done, we can actually start off with the particle animation. So let's go to the particle properties and select our original main icosphere. So we'll name it as emitter in the outliner itself. And we'll name this icosphere as the particle just so that we don't get confused later on. After that, with the emitter selected, we'll go to the particle settings and create a new particle system. We're going to increase the number to something like 5000 so that there are many more particles. And we'll go ahead and start the particle animation from about 75 frames before the actual start. So we're going to say minus 75 and we're going to end it 75 frames before the end of our animation. So if you want it to be 150 frames long, we're going to have to end it at frame number 75. We'll keep the lifetime at 50 itself such that after the last frame, all the particles die out before the actual end of the animation. Once we're done with that, we can go down to the field weights and switch gravity off all the way to zero. And then under render, we can change it from render as halo to render as object. And for the object, we can instance the particle that we had selected. Apart from that, we can increase the scale randomness all the way to one. And that's about it for our first particle system. The next thing that we have to do is create a second particle system such that we make it loop. So we can press plus to create a new particle system slot. But instead of using this new particle settings, we'll select the original particle settings that we had and then press this to or this button to make it its own user. And then all you have to do is change the frame start and frame end. So remember this started 75 frames before the original animation begins. So we have to start this one 75 frames before the end. So if we're ending it at 150, we have to change this to start at 75. The previous one had a length of minus 75 to plus 75, which was 150. So this one should also have 150 frame length. So we can just press the end as 75 plus 150, which will be 225. Apart from that, all of the settings should be the same since we just duplicated the particle systems. Another thing that we should do is just go to the render and switch off show emitter as well as under the viewport display, we can uncheck show emitter. That way, the actual UV sphere will not be seen. When we do this to one of the particle systems, it automatically gets shifted over to this other particle system as well. So once you're done with that, you can go to the cache and just bake for both of the particle systems. So we did that for particle system and for particle system 001. So now when you actually play the animation, it should be a perfectly looping animation. Now the thing is that we made it such that it loops at frame 150, but right now our frame goes on to frame 250. So what we have to do is set all of our animation defaults. So we can go to our render properties, switch on bloom because we'll need that for the texturing. And we can go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the end frame to 150. Apart from that, we can change the output folder to wherever we want it to be stored. And the file format can be FFmpeg video with an encoding set to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptory lossless. So now when you actually play the animation, it'll be a perfectly looping particle system animation as you can see over here. Now we actually require the object or the emitter to loop in a circle just to add some more visual appeal. So we can press Shift A, Curve, and search for the Bezier circle and just scale it up by something like Pi and then go to the Curve properties down here and in increase the resolution from 12 to 64 so that it's a lot smoother. Then we can select the emitter, go to the object constraint properties over here and add in a new follow path constraint. After that, for the target, we can choose the Bezier circle that we just created. And then on frame zero, we can go ahead and press I while hovering over the offset. And then at frame 150, we can change the offset all the way to 100 and then press I such that it goes an entire round around the circle. But if you actually play the animation, you'll see that it slows down, speeds up in the middle and slows down again. And that's because the default interpolation is Bezier. We don't want that. So we change it to linear by going down here and pressing T linear. That way it just goes as a smooth loop. Once you have that animated, you can go back to the particle properties over here and just delete the bake and rebake both of them. So just delete bake and bake and do the same for the second particle system as well. Delete bake, 
big. So now you get a particle system that loops while it actually rotates like that. So clearly we see that it isn't looping and that's because the object is present here before the start. It doesn't actually go back. So to change that, we have to change this from the timeline to the graph editor by using this button and changing to the graph editor. And for the offset, we can press control and middle mouse button to just bring everything into view. What you can do is go to the modifier properties over here. If this panel isn't present, just press N to open the panel, go to modifiers, and then click on add modifier cycles. And of course, what we're going to do is change the type from repeat motion to repeat motion with offset for both before as well as after. That way we get a straight line that passes through and then the actual start will have it somewhere behind and you get the trail of particles. Now you can go ahead and bake the animations again. In case the animation was baked, you have to delete the bake and then rebake it. Once you do that, you'll notice that you get a perfectly looping animation. Once you're happy with the perfect loop, you can change back to the timeline, bring it down, go to the junction of these two windows and click and drag to open a new window, which we're gonna use to actually create the shading. So we'll go ahead and change the editor type to the shader editor, press N to remove that side panel, select the particle and create a new material by either pressing the new button over here or going down to the material properties here and pressing new. Now you can select the camera, press Alt G, Alt R, R, X, 90, then grab it on the Y and just move it back and press zero to go into the camera view. And then in the camera properties, you can just reduce the focal length to something like 25 and change the viewport display passport out all the way to one so that you don't see anything outside the viewport. Now, I think something like this is fairly good enough. Of course, you could have all of it fit within the scene by moving the camera back. So it would just be GY and bringing it back. But I think I like the particles actually going off screen. So that's something that I like. Apart from that, you can also grab it on the Z axis to move it up and then rotate it on the X to point it back down and just play around till you're happy with whatever you feel is a good composition for your own use case. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and start the actual texturing. The first thing is we don't require the light. We can go ahead and select it and press delete to remove it. Then we can change the viewport display on top over here by using the scroll wheel and changing it to rendered so that we can actually see what's happening. Then we can choose particle and for the material that we just added in, we can go ahead and press X to delete the principal BSDF and search for an emission node and plug that into the surface. Now having a single color would be a little boring. So what we'll do is we'll add in a color ramp and just plug that into the color, increase the strength to something like 50 to get a really nice bloom. And to change the color, we can go ahead and use many methods. What I'm going to use is the texture coordinate and an empty object method. I'll just search for a texture coordinate node and plug the object value into the factor. And for the object, I'm going to create a new empty. So I'll press shift A, empty, plane axis, and then again, select the emitter particle object. And for the object, select the empty. Now you can see how certain particles are black on this side, and that's pretty close to what we want. However, we want the gradient to be a lot more and we want some more colors in the middle. So we'll go ahead and press plus twice to get two new markers. We'll change this black to maybe a green color or a lemon green color like this. This one we can change to a complete green color by making the brightness all the way up and making this green. This one can be nice view of 0 0.5. This one could be maybe a little more bluish and that's about it. Now to actually increase the gradient, you can select the empty and just scale it up and then grab it on the X and just move it to the side till the actual colors come in. So I think something like that is all right. And now you can see how it all works out. Now I'm also gonna just rotate it on the Z a little bit so that the colors start changing when it's in front of the camera itself so you can see what works for you and just play around with the animation. Now, the next thing is going to the world properties over here and changing the color of the background all the way to black. And you see this huge green glow is coming from the particle. We don't want to see it. So we can just press this and this button to remove it. Apart from that, the bloom is definitely overpowering the scene. But instead of actually changing the bloom settings, what we can do is go to the render properties, go down to color management and change the look from none to very high contrast. And that actually reduces the bloom quite a bit. And if you still aren't happy with it, then you can go to the bloom and change the intensity or clamp it to something that you feel suits better for your scene. Now, now I still want the gradient to change even more. So I'm going to select the empty, scale it up. I'm pretty happy with the placement of everything over here. And the last thing that you can do is actually put some motion blur. So for that, just check the motion blur button over here, go down and increase the shutter all the way to one. 
because the particles are moving fairly slowly and you would require quite a lot of blurring. So you can actually just render an image to see one particular frame. And if you're happy with it, you can render out the animation. However, I feel like a subdivision surface for the icosphere at one, you can clearly see the actual triangular shape and it's not as round as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to actually select the particle and add in a new subdivision surface modifier, but make sure that you save it before doing this. And that'll just make the particles a lot rounder. So that's about it for this particular tutorial. Hopefully you learned something and you can actually create really cool sci-fi animations based on your requirements whenever you want. Videos are going to be coming out every single day. Some of them are going to be simple like this. Some of them are going to be much more complex. So hopefully you'll find something that benefits you. And if you do want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe to stay tuned. And don't forget to stay creative.